Hello and welcome to the Turn 4 Podcast. I am your host, Dan Maldonado. If this is your first time listening, welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. This podcast comes from two lifelong fans of IndyCar and other forms of motorsport. Before we get started, let me introduce you to my co-host, Tim Reiner. Hey, Timmy. Hey, Dan. How are you? I am good. How about you? I wanted to sing a little Fuji's for you, you know, back to life, back <laughs> to reality. How was vacation? Uh, it was uh, really nice. It was uh, tough to come back, back to life, back to reality, but yeah. uh, I made it. Uh, we're back in the great state of Michigan and uh, it was good. It was a very relaxing weekend or week, I should say. And uh you know, back in the saddle at work and then obviously doing this. And I know we did an episode when I was there, which I screwed up the time zone for uh, those of you that don't know. And uh, yeah, it was a little late to the podcast. So I'm happy to be on time today. And nobody uh, would know it because do... it was completely seamless. We had, you know, Gacker in the beginning and then you you picked up at the end there. Yeah, because unless you're watching uh, YouTube and then you see the text that comes across that says to <laughs> finally figures out central time. <laughs> Uh, people would kind of clue in on that a little bit. Yeah, so I, I, I forgot I, I did that. that. Yeah, nice transition from yeah. one interview to the next uh, <laughs> part of the show. So good job, Dan. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you're back. Glad you had a nice vacation. You and yeah. your bride and your kids there. So that was fantastic. So welcome yeah. home. Thank um, you. Did you get a chance to watch these races? I did. I got both? a chance to watch yeah, any car in Formula One. I did. What? I couldn't watch Formula One live, uh, but I did watch it on tape. And uh, we call it tape. You know, we're a little old. Uh, yeah, I know. yeah. And I watched it in two segments. I didn't watch the whole thing at one time. But yeah, I got to watch both of them. Of course. I said I said to my beautiful bride, I said, I'm just going to take a two hour nap and then I'm going to get up and watch this thing live. She's like, no, you're not. <laughs> and I'm like, hell no, I'm not. So yeah. I've done that before, you know, back way back when, you know, I did that. I used to do that for champ car too when they raced in japan because it mm -hmm. was you know it, it was overnight like that if you wanted to catch it live did you so, attempt to get up or no no god no no <laughs> no no uh god. yeah I, it was it one o'clock in the morning or something yeah i think yeah, it started yeah, like yeah some silly like like twelve fifty four. you know the the thing you have to do though is just stay off social media the next day right so that's yep. what i did stay off my phone all day and i'm sure you know that because i didn't get back to you until like 10 o'clock at night that must be very uh, difficult for you. I didn't know it's very easy. I put I my phone down at <laughs> uh, when I got up at nine or whatever time it was, the eight o'clock, and then I didn't uh, pick it back up till 10, 10 30 at night. So it was a nice day off of everything. Yep. Well, you want to talk IndyCar first? Yeah, I think we should, right? We're, I think we're we mostly should. an IndyCar podcast, right? That's so right. Let's, let's That's right. I, I thought it was a great race, right? We, we've, talked about texas a lot and how this used to be such a fantastic race and really great racing and and great memories and you know everything else and huge crowds but i i thought this race was really good i i thought the product on track was really good people in the stands didn't look look too bad to me i don't know how they're selling these tickets i really need to look into this because i feel like for the number of people that were in those stands they should have been in a more condensed location as opposed to just spread out. So I don't know if it's all GA and you just get there and you sit where you're going to sit or if if they're actually assigning you seats for this thing. But I would like to have seen people a little more condensed. It would have made the crowd look a little a little bigger than, you know, and than it how, but it still looked good on TV. It looked better you than it did so? last year. Yes, I, I think I it looked think better so. than last year. <laughs> oh, it's not great. It's not. I'm no, not saying it was great, but I'm a lot I, of bleachers. Oh, yeah, but it's Empty a NASCAR bleachers. track. They all look like that. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I, I'm assuming it's general admission, and you sit wherever you want in between the sections that they have open, and that's where they have the concessions open and everything else. But it didn't look great, in my opinion. It, it looked pretty sparse. Um, there was maybe twenty thousand there. I would put it at maybe fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's, um, I, it wasn't good from a, um. And so let me just preference this. So I, I, in the morning, I watched a little bit of F1, right? And they talked about the attendance, 444,000 over the three days or whatever it was. And you looked at the grandstands, they were packed. And you looked at the grounds and they were full of people standing around, which reminded me of Coda and how miserable everybody must have been standing in the, in the grass there. 
and then we get to the indie car race and i'm like man it's, it's like, comfy <laughs> yeah no spread out bring yeah. a sleeping bag whatever you want to do in the stands it's like oh my goodness so from that yeah. perspective i was like there's nobody here qualifying and it's disappointing that saturday it's... looked like a like an like a closed test so i feel like the truck series fans probably showed up when right before the truck series started did you see some of the truck series i did not see any okay i didn't know what the, the yeah. stands looked like yeah but uh i i would i would guess it was yeah, I, probably a little better than indycar but um it, I watched a little it, bit I, of I thought they looked good. Like to me, it was a positive effort um, versus last year, but the product was fantastic. Yeah. This is honestly what I thought. I was like, these drivers are putting their lives on the line to race and they're racing in front of a handful of people. And that's not great. Like, in my opinion, I don't think it's good for the series. I don't think it's good for just the team atmosphere. Like right. I'm talking the physical teams for the IndyCar race and going, why are we out here doing this? If, there's not that many people in the grandstand. So I don't know. Yep. Well, it, the people that did show up and the people that tuned in certainly got to see a really good race. Uh, one that um, Joseph with an F new garden won second race or second win in a year at our second, second win consecutive in a row. Um, yeah. In a row. And uh, he led the most laps as well. 123 laps. Um, he certainly has a, a ton of success there. Uh, and he was fast from the start. I, you know, is this a surprise? No, not at all. We're going to get to the surprises at team Penske here in a minute, but I, I, yeah, I don't it think was it a was good, a surprise that he not was a surprise there. at all. You know, I thought, uh, he was, he was fast. He got up to the front right away, mm -hmm. um, within three laps, whatever it was, he made his moves and, and moved up to where he was. Cause he started fourth and, he drove out there for a while so yeah he looked good and ended up coming away with the victory you, you never want to see a race end under yellow but it's the way it did and um i got no problem with it overall um yeah. and it's just a matter who was in front of one another at the end there and they were super close and riding side by side yeah i think he would have taken it um and he would have taken it for reasons we're going to talk a little bit about um new garden had the tire advantage right six yeah. stops versus five and versus four with polo but mm -hmm. um you know I, new garden had the tire advantage i think he was he would have taken even if it had gone green those final couple of laps i think he'd have been yeah. fine yeah it's little... interesting the way that he interviewed at the end like they got that one stint off uh where they were a little mm -hmm. slower not slow as everybody else because we right. know most of the field got lapped um where uh, pato was out front for that stint and he said uh, he was the one who made the change and told the engineers what he wanted to do and uh, he obviously regretted it and they they dialed the car back in yeah yeah great job and that's and it's you know penske ability there too right that's that expertise yeah yeah dial it you in dial yeah. it back out i mean they get yeah. they can make those changes in between states, yeah so it was really great and it was interesting to hear that joseph admitted it was his call to make that change yep. and that it hurt him and um obviously there must have been radio communication that day that wasn't the right way to go and they said all right, we'll put it back or whatever they did. Hang but, on. Uh, yeah. Hang on to yeah. it and we'll pull yeah. it back. Yeah. And you figure he hung on to it and he was only seven and a half seconds back mm -hmm. from Pato at that time. Yeah. So it was off, but it wasn't that far off. Right. Sixth place was uh, New Garden's bus bro, uh, Scotty Mac. And this was a little bit of a surprise to me. I, I think I would have, I, I certainly expected him to uh, do better. He, qualified poorly he started in 15th he said on the on the broadcast that it was he had a gust of wind that kind of pushed him off so he had some difficulties with that um but you know to rebound to a sixth place finish i think not too shabby he did have a bad stop there in the closing um you know around mid midway there but 85 mm -hmm. laps to go he had a bad stop but um you know finished sixth but he was not i don't think he was in play for the win with or without yellow flags he was just he wasn't in play no, he I got, think that's a day of it. just, yeah, just improving um, throughout the day, right? He, mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, he started way back and then came through the field slowly, right? It was a, it was a slow march, but he was never a really factor for the, for the top three spots at all throughout the whole day. Um, so yeah, I was a little surprised as well that he wasn't uh, up there uh, as much as uh, uh, he, he, like he was last year, right? He was dueling it out for the win last year and 
Uh, New Garden just got him at the uh, finish line on the last lap. So turn yeah. four there. Um, my surprise goes to bewilderment. I don't know what happened to Will Power in this bewildered situation. Uh, right at the end of that first stint, right in the closing laps of that first stint, it was like he had put out the parachute or driving in reverse. I mean, in some of those cases, it looked like he was he was way off. And it oh, didn't yeah. seem to get that much better in that second stint. We know that Will doesn't exactly doesn't always do a lot of changes throughout the throughout the race weekend. He he races what he's got, minor changes here and there. And you know maybe he thought that fresh tires would would make all the difference. It didn't make any difference at all. And um, you know he was really a non factor in this. I mean he kept it clean and he was lucky too because there was some things that happened back there and certainly some. Um, you know, there's a greater chance of something going wrong in the in the back of the field there uh, versus mm -hmm. running your own race at the front. But, uh, you know, he rebounded to finish 16th, uh, probably the best that he could he could certainly do. But, um, you know, can we call that a recovery? I don't know, man. That was I surprising. Call it surviving. Yeah, I call it surviving. They Something happened on that stint and something yeah. happened bad where, as you mentioned, it looked like it was a parachute, which I ended up checking up the field, which I think caused the first yellow with Sato, right? Because there it was did. a lot of cars that backed mm -hmm. up and, you know, cars trying to slow down in corners to avoid Will. And then uh, Sato uh, lost it, got up in the gray area and spun Sato around. Sato went so. out, right? Somebody went inside of Will too, and Will was kind mm -hmm. of in the middle there. And I think it, that's that's where problems are going to gonna happen, right? Yeah. If, if Will was able to keep it down, Sato probably would have gotten away with that outside move. But, you know, he he didn't because it he was just pushed too high into that mm -hmm. into the no man's land and that's still kind of no man's land i mean they've they've helped it a lot but getting super high there it's just just no man's yeah, land. yeah so i think kind uh, of a bummer side by me. side racing uh, is something that's new since they put down the the surface on the track right this is yeah something they've been trying to work in trying to get it right and i think they figured it out because there was a lot of side by side racing and there was three uh, car wide going down the uh, mm -hmm. front straight as well as the back straight. So there was a lot of uh, passes and interaction going on. And I think there was a, a it was almost a record when it came to yeah. number of passes and lead changes and things of that sort. So there were some stats that I saw that were really good. Um, but yeah, I, I think they just, they just got it wrong. I don't know how you get one car really good and you get the other two, one sort of mediocre and the other one just really bad. Right. Um, but maybe it's driver style and how they set up those cars. I have two things I'm gonna, I want to say here. The first thing relative to Penske is this doesn't exactly make me feel great going into the 500, right? We talked a little bit about this in the in the preview podcast, mm -hmm. but there's some things that to shake down going into into the 500 that this track provides. You're not going to get anywhere else, right? You're not going to mm -hmm. get that at Barber, yeah. but you've got that here, and it makes me feel like there's still some inconsistencies here that mm -hmm. could rear themselves at the 500 but magnified right yeah. because it's it's longer it's bigger it's flatter right some of this mm -hmm. banking kind of masks some of these things mm -hmm. um makes me wonder how they're going to do at the 500 yeah the, the um, second thing i'll say here is and I'll, I'll let you i'll let you take off on both these points the second point i'll make is I think the teams that got it really, really right with the new aero package and, and the new line and, and everything at Texas, they got it really, really right. But it, it feels to me like it was either you were really, really right or you were hanging on. Yeah. Because I don't know how you get to two cars on the lead lap. Right? With yeah, what, yeah. 90 to go or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you're absolutely right. I think there's, there's something to it and everybody seemed to fall off except for the two cars when right. everybody went. Yeah. And whether it was just tire degradation that took place on those, you're, you're racing, right. You're trying as hard as you can. The stint goes a full stint. All of a sudden you drop off. Could be a weather change as well. Temperature track mm -hmm. change, uh, all of that kind of plays into it. But, uh, you know, I thought when you looked at teams and who got it right across all their cars, I think you got to, look at arrow right arrow was one oh of yeah those teams that got it yep. right with all their cars mm -hmm. and even at the start when you're looking at the starting lineup they were kind of lined up as my understanding uh front to back uh with each other um you know there's some unfortunate incidences on some of those cars but um 
I don't know how the two cars that you mentioned, uh, Pato and Newgarden, had it so right in that stint and everybody else was way off when Newgarden said his was still off. Um, if you go yeah. back to what you mentioned with Penske for Indianapolis, I think, you know, I, I think there's, I don't want to say a more focused effort on any, I think they want it. There's a really big need and a lot of pressure to get it right this year because they haven't been right in so many years that they're going to um, put a lot of effort towards it. So does Texas play into it a little bit? Yeah, maybe. Um, but maybe that's why you have three different cars on potentially three different setups to see what really works in the car. And how do you take that to Indianapolis and go, okay, this is where we got it right on this one. And these two were a little off based on our adjustments and what we made to those uh, vehicles. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It's right. We're getting, getting close. I mean, it's just, you know, a few weeks before we, we start seeing some, you know, months before we start seeing some track action there at the, yeah. the oval. so that's we'll really close. Yeah. But you mentioned Aero McLaren and Aero McLaren was strong right out of the, right out, right off the truck. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, so more surprisingly though, that uh, Rosenquist was taking pole there, uh, over award and over Rossi, but Rossi, I think Rossi's come, come alive with this team pretty well, like right out of the gate. Um, mm -hmm. He needs some luck to pull some things together, but uh, award finishes second, uh, second most laps led with 91 and the worst of the three Aero McLaren drivers with, with in the start uh, with Felix on pole and Rossi starting third. Um, I expected this squad to be strong. Um, the difference with this finish is I am my paper notes. I got to switch very likely the fact that uh, new garden took a new set of tires and award stayed out. Uh, to me, that's the difference. We mentioned that mm -hmm. with with award staying on older tires instead of taking the advantage of of the yellow flag stops toward the end there. Um, I think that's that was part of the difference. Rossi finished 22nd. Unless you want to talk about award here for a minute, but we're going to get juicy talk on on Rossi. I, you know, I, I was thinking the other way around when it came down to the two, I thought award was going to make it happen just based on that one stint where he was dominant. So I mm -hmm. thought there was a potential for him to take uh, the win here. Um, obviously it didn't come down to it. There was a yellow flag at the end, uh, but he wasn't able to pull away like he was before. Mm -hmm. So your, your point is probably the most valid one of the reason that new garden pulled it out. Um, but you know, strong showing. If you just think of Pato and where he's at in the series, he's had two second place finishes. He's obviously the leader of the championship right now. Uh, they seem to be clicking on all cylinders, if you will. And uh, they're a super strong contender in looking at race one and race two to be in the hunt all year long and be in on the podium most yeah. week in and week out. So this is going to be interesting to watch going into – Long Beach to see mm -hmm. how McLaren comes out of the gate there because you're back to a street course, which they did really well there. So he's sort of in the in the bird, cat bird seat. Is that how's that go? What's sure. The, yeah, he's sort of in that that seat to sort of uh, watch and and continue his almost dominant. You you figure he could have, yeah. and he should he should have won the first race. He could be uh, winning. Uh, both uh first two races but yeah it just two seconds instead of two first that close and the one in uh st pete was just a glitch with the engine supposedly yeah. um and this one just came down to i don't you, you didn't get to do the last two laps under green so uh what could be but what isn't uh on that but uh, look for them to be strong going into the yeah. uh, leading the championship well which the is great right yeah. that's special for him exactly. so and it's great for that team uh, cause mm -hmm. they certainly have nothing going on on the formula one side. So, yeah. Uh, 20 so I guess I wanted to talk a little bit more about award and I just didn't yeah, know yeah. it. Sorry. <laughs> 22nd place, uh, Alexander Rossi. Um, I, I don't really know what you could say here. It, I, I need to know your take on this incident. I mean, 24 hours later, more than 24 hours later, we know that right. Kirkwood wasn't a foul of the rules apparently, but what, what is your, what's your take on this? I, I, saw it as an unsafe release you did and that's that's how i saw it immediately as soon as it happened i'm like that's an unsafe release and then the commentary talking about yes. he should have been a lane in and this and that then i was like oh maybe it wasn't but i don't i've never seen a rule on where you need to be in order to get in your pit i thought it was the inside lane 
that that represented you were you were in for pit and when you're in the outside lane you're out to track i don't so when they come in no one's in the in, inside lane they're all on the outside unless you're in the first few pit stalls i believe you're right i don't know i don't know if this is cause for a, a rule sort of looking at the rules clarification the, like f1 yeah, style clarification yeah. of what the where you yeah. should be but at the end of the day you know who's pitting in front of you but when you look at kirkwood's car is it is it an andretti car or is it a meyer shank car who knows what it is it's yeah. still going through because they're all auto nation right it, yeah then they're you got the pink on that so i i don't know at, at well, the end of the day, it? It, tell me more. I want to hear. What I you saw got. it like the guys in the booth saw it. I I, I saw it as I, what 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 was he doing trying to pit from the outside lane? Hmm. Like it made no sense. And he came in at an odd angle. So it was almost like, was he going to miss his his pit if he hadn't turned in like that? And and, you know, whatever. Or maybe he tried to delay it as much as he could because he saw that Rossi was coming out and he just he had nowhere to go at that yeah. point. Right. Um. I can't but, imagine that the pit boxes were tight. That would make you swing around that wide, no, right? right? So maybe yeah. it was, could you have been in that inside lane and still got into your pit box? No problem without clipping the the right front of the car in front of you or that right front tire that's sitting there. I don't know. I firmly believe that had he been on that inside lane, that, that Rossi's team wouldn't have released him. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I really do. I think they would have waited because they'd have known he was pitting. They didn't, Surely they they should have known by then that that's the car pitting ahead of them, right? Or a couple of spots ahead of them, mm -hmm. and um, and so they would have held them. Yeah, is what I think. So I was shocked that that ended up being a uh, a penalty on Rossi for you know unsafe release, and um, you know no hope of that through this drive through penalty. No hope of having any kind of race whatsoever at that point. So it was a yeah, and he had damage, issue. right? They had to fix the yep. part of the yep. right front wheel, wheel, excuse me. Yep. And then uh, I think they lost four laps doing that. And then at the end of the day, they had to do drive through, and the day's over. Yeah, um, it's funny. Kirkwood tweeted uh, that he's gotten a lot of quote hate mail, and um, you know that the NBC booth had already apologized uh, for making him the bad guy in that situation. So uh, he goes on to continue to proclaim he did nothing wrong, which IndyCar kind of affirmed he did nothing wrong um mm -hmm. you know do i think he's innocent i i don't know like i said i mean i i've been watching this for a long time i i feel like to me you're on the inside lane if you're pitting and you're on the outside lane if you're going back on on track mm -hmm. i'm going to stay to that till i die but i i don't you know i don't make up the rules i just interpret them and i got a mic so yeah i i didn't see anything wrong with the pit in so mm -hmm. i i Put it all on Rossi's crew. It's yeah. not on Alexander Rossi. It's on the crew. Certainly level. not. Yeah, he can't yeah. see. Right. He's not. He's not looking at that. Yeah, and Rossi was seven laps down. He was the last guy running. Yeah. Um, everybody else below seven him was had contact. Laps down. Last yeah. guy. In a uh, car that was fast. Position, yeah, fast. Yep. Could have won. Fast. Yep. 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 Uh, one of right. One of maybe four or five cars that could have really been there to to make it you know, yeah. uh, make it oh. a race, you know, at the end there with, uh, with new garden. So 26th place, speaking of another one, uh, Rosenquist, Felix led only four laps on the day. He seemed to have a better qualifying car versus a racer. He did, he did fall back a bit right in the, uh, in the very, the very start there. Yep. Um, but he crashed shortly after making a, a stop, you know, he got high in the marbles and you know, that's obviously a recipe for disaster. I was watching this race on Peacock and this crash happened while it was like on the world's longest Peacock <laughs> commercial break. <laughs> did you watch it on Peacock no, or did you did watch not. it on NBC? NBC. So did they do side by side on the NBC commercial? Yes. Still? Yes. Okay. I, I'm done doing Peacock on this, watching it. They live. did it for most of the commercial breaks because I was always trying to get up to you know, do something in the house. And I was like, Oh, it's side by side. I need to stay here. Yeah. That's um, yeah. So aggravating. I, cause that's where I, I realized that that at that moment when they came back and Felix was in the wall and I'm like, what, what happened? Like why he just pit? He's, you know, and yeah. I thought what happened to side by side? Like why, why haven't we done this side by side thing? Mm -hmm. So I was aggravated by that, but yeah, I'm not sure that was a side by side yeah. moment though, but yeah. most of them were. Yeah. Yeah. 
nonetheless, I mean, sad to see that for Felix. That's that's two races in a row now, right? Yeah. Um, where the team has has shown a lot of strength uh, so far for the first two races of this very early season, and mm-hmm. he's not, uh, you know, he's finished it on the back of a moped as opposed to in the yeah, you know, in the driver's seat. So, so uh, he got pole like last year. So he got pole mm-hmm. like last year. Newgarden won like last year. I wonder when the last time was. Is that the <laughs> the the next round of the the following year? You have the same pole winner. You got the same winner, and it's not the same guy, right? Sometimes you're going to have a pole winner that, that just goes on and wins the that race. That is a question for our friend Chef Brian. I know that that, yeah. that was surprising to me. I guess when we were doing our picks last week, I should have said. Uh, the two guys that uh, won that, you know, I should have said Rosenquist for the poll and yeah. I should have said Newgarden for the win, which I think yeah. you chose Newgarden, didn't you? No, I chose Dixon. Oh, that's right. You didn't. Yeah, I took to You had Newgarden on the poll. You had somebody, you didn't mention him. Maybe yeah, you I don't didn't. remember. My notes are right there. But um, moving on to Ganassi Racing, pit stops to me is, is what made the difference here. Polo had four, Dixon had five, Newgarden had six, better tires when and where it counted. Uh, and that sounds counterintuitive, right? In all instances of IndyCar racing where more pits generally doesn't lead to a better race. Mm-hmm. But in this particular case, that that definitely helped. And then the yellow flags toward the end of the race. I mean, fresh Firestones was going to make a difference here. There's it was, no but I, I was very impressed with Pillow. And yes. I'll let you talk, talk about Pillow here. So I, I, this is... I believe strongly this is Alex's best oval finish since he finished second to Castro Neves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in his fourth, in you know, winning Indy 500 in 2021. Nice job by him. I mean, he led 22 laps. Um, he looked really good out there, man. He was he was shaking it up. It was so nice to see this kind of throwback IndyCar car racing on an oval where you're racing side by side, lap after lap, changing leads, changing positions, and everybody's doing it with a great deal of respect. No bumping, no banging, nothing, mm-hmm. nothing ridiculous going on here, right? Yeah. It looks so good. It looks so good. And he mm-hmm. was doing it. And he's let let's face it, he's not an oval driver, right? He didn't come up through the ranks driving yeah. ovals. Yeah. So it was so cool to see that. It was so cool I, to see that. I, I agree, but I like both parts of it. I like the side by side that happened near the end and all the racing that took place in the passing. But I also enjoyed just running away from the field. Like we got it. Do you, hooked do you up. like that dominance kind of thing? I do because it's just, it, it reminds me of the old days, but it reminds me of you either get it right. Or if yeah, it, you, get it, you get it wrong, you're going straight to the back. And I, I didn't mind it. I was like, wow, this is very interesting. What's going to happen. Cause back in the day, if you saw that happen, you're like, Oh, he's pushing it too hard. Something's going to go wrong. Yeah. The engine's going to blow. A tire's going to explode or the tire's going to go off eventually. And so that brought a sense of excitement to me. I I like the side by side, but I like the side by side that we're doing this for a little bit until, you know, one car shows its power over the other or they yeah. show their ability to have a better setup and and somebody just burns their tires out and somebody doesn't. So, yeah. Around and around and around side by side doesn't do it for then it's just uh, to me it's like a drafting game yeah i love it i really do i love it <laughs> so excited because you're you can't breathe right you're like on the edge of your seat like how how, how are they doing it right because mm-hmm. even i mean it's not just static right i mean there's a lot of weaving and there's a lot of you know in and out and a lot of things you know in not necessarily intentional but it's it's keeping your track your yeah. car on the track right yeah. things that have to happen so it is so cool to see that i think that is that is really really cool to see that well, I will said, tell you though this, mm-hmm. this dominance that you had, where you know the field was lapped, mm-hmm. except for you know first and second place, in a series with right a thirteen hundred year old car that hasn't been you know that's Spec really series. been maxed Everybody's out in the, the development, yep. pretty much the same engine package, right? Mm-hmm. And you see that level of dominance right at the at the front of the field. We haven't seen that here in a long time. No. I would and, say almost back in the IRL days, right? With the haves and have nots. It's like when the Ganassi and Penske came back, came yeah. into IRL and you had all the IRL regulars, the guys who started the series. That's kind of what that was, right? They were yeah. they were left behind. I even go back farther when it's uh, Lola, Renard, mm-hmm. the Penske yeah. chassis. And one of those chassis is just hooked up. 
maybe even go back to when it was the tire war, when you had Goodyear and Firestone and they were going around and, you know, one would get it really good and the other one wouldn't, but there was, you know, they would just pull out and just go away. And you're like, well, what, what do they have technology wise that someone else doesn't have? And what didn't they do? Uh, to me, that's intriguing enough to go, is it going to last? Is it going to survive? Yeah. Are they going to make it happen? The side-by-side is good in my opinion, but I, I like to see a little, you know, ebb and flow to the, the race. Like there's, you know, pe- people come and go in. Um, and that's what I expected down to the end of the race. And then they had the yellow and the cars that were lapped down, got their lap back. And so then there were seven cars on the lead lap. And I'm like, okay, I still think the two are going to pull away. And they never did because they were all able to. St- so it was just, it's intriguing on how that happened, how that all came together. Yeah. It is. It, it was, it was, it was fun to watch. I mean, it, it is kind of a throwback and I think that's part of what you and I fell in love with, right. Mm-hmm. Was that, that style of racing and that kind of racing. So it was really cool to see. Yeah. Scott Dixon finishes fifth. Um, only three laps led by the Texas all-time uh, winner. Uh, otherwise just a quiet and productive day, right. By Dixie. I, I don't think really Scott much, being Scott, much to say right, there. Right? Yeah. Scott being Scott. He was my pick. Which, you know, let's face it, that's not clairvoyance. This is the guy who's right, the all time winner at Texas. So, you know, that's a pretty safe pick. Uh, and he finishes fifth. Um, after the race, Dixie was less than complimentary of Grosjean's driving style during the race. Tim, I didn't see anything. Did you? Uh, I saw a few things that, you know, it's anything either more than you would normally see in an oval like this where things are a little crazy. I think he overdrives. I'll just put it like that. I think a Grosjean overdrives, takes the car way to the limits and doesn't give a lot of room to other drivers. Like his courtesy is not to the same level as other drivers. And at the end of the day, he threw away a good finish, which is he didn't have the car to win. And he still thought driving the car, he had the car to win is what, how I'm interpreting what happened to him. So I think, I think Grosjean's still learning how to drive, not how to drive, but how to, uh, the, how the to drive over. Yeah. I think that's very fair. It, like the gentleman yeah. rules for IndyCar racing, mm-hmm. especially on ovals that you're doing 220. Yeah. And you could get somebody in a bad situation really quickly. If you do something, yep. if you make a bonehead move. And I think he's prone to be a little more aggressive than he should, yeah. which is good entertainment for all of us. But at the same time, as a driver, you're like, ah, I'm a little, you know, nervous around him to be uh, this close wheel to wheel with Grosjean. So I can, I can yeah. see Scott's point. I didn't see it. And I can be critical from that perspective, but I didn't, I didn't see it. There was a bump. I th- there was a bump between the two Yeah, and uh, it was minor, but it was uh, on the front straight. Uh, the second little kink, if you will, after the start finish line. Yeah. And they both came out of it on skate, but at the end of the day, Grosjean threw it in the wall. Yeah. So I will say this, uh, uh, Scott Dixon, this led to the best quote ever from Scott Dixon, in my opinion, on Twitter. It uh, comes courtesy of Brian, right? Chef Brian, five, at 500 Indy 1911, if you want to follow him on Twitter. He's a great follow. And it says, uh, quote from, from Dixon, I mean, Grosjean was all over the shop. But you could, I would love to hear that. In, I didn't hear that quote, but mm-hmm. I would love to hear in Scott Dixon's accent and just as matter of fact delivery, that <laughs> makes me crack up because I can hear it in my mind. I love it. Yeah. I love, I, I just, I just love that phrase. So he was less than complimentary. Um, kudos to Dixon though. Uh, this was his 370th start. 52% of those starts concluding with a top five finish, which is amazing. Wow. That's that yeah. again, courtesy of Chef Brian at uh, 500 Indy 1911 on Twitter. Um, this also means another Mario Andretti record has fallen as, as Dixie eclipses the mark of 194 top five finishes. I would be curious to know what Mario's percentage is, but that's a pretty stout percentage. And that's, that's a huge number, 194 top five finishes. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. I can't imagine anybody's even close to even, and no one's going to hit that for a long, long no. time. So yeah. he's been dominant. He's been with uh, Chip Ganassi racing forever and they've got it all hooked up. So good for them. Yep. Uh, eighth place, Erickson, Again, another quiet day by Erickson uh, with his eighth place finish. He started 16th, which wasn't great, um, but he he managed to clean that up, stayed out of any messes out there. 
uh, solid finish to go along with his win last month in St. Pete, which means he's now second in the championship behind a win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, it's a typical Erickson day too. It's one of yeah. those like, meh, he was there, but he wasn't, he wasn't there like for the win. And he wasn't there battling out at some point for the lead. He just, he, he did what the equipment allowed him to do apparently. And that's where he finished. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's Chip safe. likes winners, but I think Chip likes people that get everything they possibly can. Yeah, and I think that's what you see out of, you know, Palo and Dixon and and Erickson. Yeah, Palo was, I, I, and I don't mean to go back, but he was pretty aggressive here. He was, and mm-hmm. I was surprised to see how strong he was at the end, and it had the potential to hang with guys that had fresher tires than he did, and. Um, I think his quote was, I'm glad they didn't tell me because I was just <laughs> racing as hard as I could with these guys. Right. All right. Yeah. Did you, did you notice, I know this is going to sound funny. We're going back to Polo again, but did you notice Polo looks like he's bulked up a bit? No, oh, it comes and with age, right? We should know that. It does. I mean, he's, <laughs> but I'm not saying like you and I have bulked up. I'm saying like <laughs> he's bulked up a bit, but you know, a thicker, a little more muscular looking neck, Okay. which probably because he's, he's right. He's planning to do some testing in formula one, but also it helps with these cars because there's no power steering here. So you got to have massive upper body strength to handle Mm -hmm. this, but you also have to have, you know, that those neck muscles to support your neck in these G situations. To me, he looked like he, like he had bulked up a little bit. Yeah. You know, I didn't notice, but, uh, I just noticed his, uh, same demeanor. He's always had very Mm -hmm. gentle, soft-spoken and, uh, very appreciative for what he had in the car today, that, uh, yesterday, and what he was able to do on a noble that he hasn't typically been successful and didn't yeah. grow up racing. That's true. Uh, 28th place, Sato. Kind of bummed. Bummed with this. It's last place, fun. by the way. Yep. Victim of getting too high, too high, too early. Uh, outside of that three uh, wide effort there, just trying to split, uh, you know, willpower as he was driving backwards. Um, mm-hmm. through the field and uh, just had nowhere to go, Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, and that's uh, it's unfortunate. I, I thought he was either going to be up front or he was going to crash, and unfortunately. Me too, yeah. He, he, um, Top five. Yeah, for sure. I think he would have been up there and uh, just a, just caught up in that, right? I don't think it's – it's not his fault. It's No. You got a car that's running 20 to 30 miles an hour slower than what you're running, and you yeah. come up on him and you got to – choose a path and you chose a path to get you in the marbles but and he'll be back at indy so we'll get to see him again and uh that's the extent of the contract as far as we know for the two races and we'll see if it gets extended but if you put it in the wall at indy i don't think it gets extended me neither that ain't happening they're gonna yep. put uh marcus armstrong i think in that car mm-hmm. for iowa and gateway yep uh fourth place team coin what say that again coin Fourth place <laughs> team, Love right? It. Penske, Aero, McLaren, right? Aero, McLaren, Ganassi, Coin. Fourth wow. place, David Malukas. He's coming into his own, man. This young man, I, he Good. just continues to impress. I mean, he was strong. He raced some veterans at the front of this field, Tim, and he raced him clean. Great deal of Good. respect. I mean, he did he did a nice job. I think he came mm-hmm. a long way in impressing a lot of people in that paddock with with his uh, with his demeanor yesterday. Yeah, and I think he backed out of a few situations. He could have got himself in trouble. And yeah. so it was just heads up driving. I was hoping for a little more when he was up there. And I think uh, some of the announcers were hoping for a little bit more because it was just impressive that he was there and he was battling with these guys to get yeah. a fourth place finish is, is really good. It's in front of Dixon yeah. and plenty of other folks, right? So yeah. He didn't um, have the tires either, but I mean... He held yeah. on just like, just like Palo did, right? He was he able to maximize everything he could and he held on to finish fourth. That that's, that's stout, man. Yeah. I wondered, yeah. didn't they sign like a multi-year deal to stay at coin for a while? And so I'm just wondering, there's gotta be teams looking at him and wanting him on their team because he was really good last year. He, I think by many people believe he should have won rookie of the year. He didn't, but, uh, he was even strong in Indy last year, I believe. So yeah. I would say look out for him this year at Indy. Um, as far as the contract situation, I would suspect that he's got he's got a he's got a pretty no. clear out clause if it's 
Ganassi, mm-hmm. if it's Arrow McLaren, which, you know, McLaren likes to sign everybody. Penske, you know, somebody like that. Although we were told there's going to be no room at Penske here over the next several years as Will Power signed a multi-year extension this, yeah. you know, in the past couple of weeks. What do you think of sticking, that? Um, safe. Yeah. Not surprising. Um, I think as long as, as Verizon's cutting that check and willing to cut that check if Will's yeah. name's on there, then I think you, you leave Will on there. Yeah. Right? That's you don't want to argue with well. him. Yeah. You don't want to say, no. well, hey, look, we got this coin driver, right? He's really come alive yeah. and, you know, he's a good, good clean cut kid and speaks well on yeah. TV and everything. We want to put him in there and he'd be like, well, Will's won a lot of races for us. Two championships, a lot of polls, you know, mm-hmm. so. And if they're right, you, the you gotta love listening to Will Power, right? Yeah, man. I love Will Power. You know that. <laughs> I love Will Power. I love to hear him talk. I like the whole thing. I love I love everything about him. Yeah. Hey, we're at David Malukas, fourth place coin, 25th, Stingray Rob. Not the ideal start to Stingray's IndyCar career. Crashed out in St. Pete, crashed out here, said he got his bell rung. I'd be curious to see if he's gonna go through any kind of protocols there. Um, mm. Rookie mistakes, Tim, or? I never liked the pick originally. So I, I think I what I'm, didn't. yeah, I think it kind of shows what's uh, happening right now. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, definitely rookie mistakes. I don't, I don't know, just driver mistakes, but I don't know how you, I don't know how you recover. It's got to be a blow. Yeah. Uh, you got your teammate finishing fourth, your 25th. Um, obviously you crashed, crashed yeah. and didn't do well the week before or the month before. So he's got some work to do at, um, uh, long beach, uh, long beach, which, Barbara, you know, he's and raced there a lot. So that's probably mm-hmm. a good thing. Yeah. He did leave a lap. He did. I didn't mm-hmm. know that yep. he's on the leader lap. One lap, the lap leaderboard. Mm-hmm. I'm looking, he did one. <laughs> Grosjean, did leave one lap. Yeah, I, I do subscribe to this idea that some people come in driving a little fearful and not fearing for the life, right? Because they had to have gotten over that years ago. These guys have been racing for years, but fearing for the opportunity, right? So you mm-hmm. overdrive it a little bit. You make some moves that you wouldn't normally make if you feel like you're pretty comfortable. And it, I talked about that in the, you know, season preview when it came to Jack Harvey, because that's my concern about Jack Harvey Mm -hmm. is Jack's going to come in and overdo, you know, overdoing it, trying to undo everything from last year. But I think it's, it's pretty clear that the, the Jack problem isn't the Jack problem. It's the RL problem. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I have my power fifth. I'm going to go, I'm going to go first since I already put it in the notes because I did. You're posting the show today, aren't you? I am posting the show today. It is my uh, duty. <laughs> power, my power fifth team today. You know, stop me if you've heard it. Hunkos Hollinger Racing. <laughs> How can you not? Right. I lot finishes ninth after starting seventeenth. Canapino never seen an oval except on TV. Finishes twelfth after starting nineteenth. Tim, I like this team. I've liked this team a lot since we spent mm-hmm. a lot of time talking to Ricardo at Detroit. Um, and I know our listeners heard me say that a lot. Um, since last year around that time. Uh, one thing I want to note here is I heard Callum, and I believe it was it was Connor Daly's podcast, Speed Street or whatever, um, where Callum Eilat said that they don't have access to the simulator like other Chevy teams do. I did see that. That is that is just insane. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. I would think that that would be part of the package, right? Once you sign the deal with Chevy, that that would be part of that package. So I'm kind of surprised by that. I'm a little surprised too. Nonetheless, I think uh, if you're Foyt, if you're Carpenter, and certainly if you're Ray Hall, you got to take notice of that because they are outperforming. Ta- Townsend Bell said that this said on the broadcast, that this isn't a little team anymore. Well, I don't know what metric Townsend is using to say that, but they certainly are smaller, especially against the likes of Shank, you know, and and Carpenter, who was yeah. outqualified by this duo and well ahead of the Ray Hall trio. Yeah. I think 
I think saying that they're, that they're not a little team anymore is a reference. Just they've got really good results. Mm -hmm. And so they're performing way above what a little team yeah. should perform. And they're, and, but he, I think he's still saying they are a little team, but they? Mm -hmm. they come up with big results, really good results. Yeah. yeah. Pitching well above their weight. Yes, well above. But it's great to see that a team with the smaller budget, a group that they just put together, that they're still working on pit stops to make sure they're quick on pits. <laughs> they're still gelling. They're still hey. gelling, but Lord. just a team that they had to add a bunch of people just to field a second car, and they're still performing well. That goes to management. That goes to uh, culture. Just the culture, culture, work ethic, mm -hmm. sticking to the basics, not trying to get fancy, and just bringing it to the track and going, okay, this is what we got. We're going to tweak it. Having some good engineers that understand engineering we'll call it uh, for lack of a better word and uh, just put it together Callum yeah. also said in that same podcast that they had the same set of dampers last year that for the whole season wow teams like Penske Ganassi Aero McLaren allegedly Ray Hall right Andretti have very yeah. specialized damper programs for yeah. track specific yeah so what does that tell you that tells you you don't need all the fancy stuff to run near the front. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. Keep it yep. simple. Who's your power fifth, Timmy? You know, my power five, I was, uh, before uh, before I uh, saw yours, I was uh, going the same direction you will, uh, you were. Um, and that's totally fine. I'm but okay. I, no, I've, I've totally switched. My power five is stuck out like a sore thumb. A sad, sore thumb. Thumb. Uh oh. And it's Ray Hall, Letterman, oh, Lanigan sad. Racing. Mm. They're my power mm. five for a dismal showing at Texas. They came out of the gate terrible, qualified yeah. terrible, had terrible races, stayed terrible. And it's unacceptable, as even Ray Hall put it. Uh, Graham said yeah. it's just unacceptable. And I, I think it's a team that needs to go back to the basics and be simple. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're trying too much. They're trying too hard. Um, they brought the right people in, in my opinion, and the right people are there to make decisions. And I think, I don't know what's getting in the way. Something's in the way there. Something's yeah. uh, preventing them. And I think it's just, I don't want to say there's a monkey on their back. It's just the chemistry isn't there. There's no chemistry. No. There's so a couple of things, um, social media wise, the first thing I'll say is somebody tweeted, you know, that they, that Graham almost looked embarrassed by the situation with the team. Um, he probably did. I, I don't yeah. disagree with that. Right. Yeah. I didn't think that in the moment, but I don't disagree with that. Thinking back to his, his interview on TV and the comments that he made. Um, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. I don't either. The, the other piece that I will say here is with regard to the culture and the management, and I tweeted this, right? Who's the bannerman there, right? Who, who's, because this person, whoever it may be, is everybody at the same time. It's the cheerleader, right? It's the dean of discipline, right? It's the shoulder to cry on. Who is that? Right? Is it Bobby? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. It's not Graham. Mm -mm. Graham lives in California. Shops yeah. in Indiana. Is it Jack? How much time does Jack spend in at the shop? I bet you yeah. Jack spends a lot of time at the shop. He lives local. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but I, who I couldn't who tell is that person? Right? They that's need that's a, what I'd love to know. They need someone new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because seemingly from an engineering expertise, they've got it. They got the former McLaren F1 yeah. guy that came in, helped clean up some things. I mean, they had a lot of, lot of high hopes going into this season. It's only two races in the season. I get it. Yep. But what we were hearing was we've got a lot of great stuff here. We just weren't putting it into action correctly. And that's going to start happening now, right? With this revised management mm -hmm. structure and this, new technical director and everything. And it doesn't look like it. It's not showing up on because track. Because if it was there, 
Mm -hmm. And all we had to do was, was have somebody who could create some focus and take away some of the noise. We should have seen something better at, at St. Pete and we didn't, mm -hmm. we surely should have seen something better at a Texas. A lot better. And we a didn't. Lot better. Yeah. Harvey qualified last long yep. yard qualified 27th second yep. to last then you got ray hall a couple ahead was, of it, right was 24th yeah it's, it's terrible yeah terrible and they terrible. didn't even normally they race pretty good right normally they 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 kind of yeah. put these poor qualifying behind them and then they race pretty good but mm -hmm. they didn't race good at all not this weekend didn't happen. they were lucky to bring it home very lucky very very lucky not yeah. not ray hall of course but yep. you know we talk about that so yep that's my power five to call on that um just a few random thoughts we talked about this ad nauseum 30 90 laps uh in and only two cars were on the lead lap award in new garden uh grosjean was third but he was a lap down driving all over the shop uh ray hall was lucky to have landed that number 15 before it got into the wall and specifically got into the fence when mm -hmm. he ran over um a damaged uh devlin d francesco uh, who veered back onto the track. I don't, I don't remember them saying I was listening for it and I looked for it today on social media and any of the, any of the sites, but I didn't see what they, if they had said what caused Devlin's damage to that brought him back out on track. Cause he was kind of on the apron and then, you know, he came hit back the wall up. in two. Is that what it was? He hit the wall coming out of two, um, hit the right rear and slowed it down, rode it down enough. And then, went into three and four and then obviously didn't slow it down far enough yeah. and then went up the track because he didn't Broke have more, any. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it snapped in that with the load in the three and four, and then it sent him up the track and that's when Ray Hall ran into it. Yeah. Yeah. Ray Hall is very lucky. Devlin was very lucky. They're right. Yeah, that's, that's twice. You don't want to see, you know, yeah. he's had two big impacts mm -hmm. in two races. You know, that's a, yeah. that's a big, big deal. Um, Grosjean again, to me looked pretty good, but bad luck took him out. Our, our boy Gacker didn't, wasn't too complimentary. He, he, you know, crashed John, but, um, I might be making an excuse here, but I, I've already been comp I've already complimented Malukas, but to me, that looked like Malukas came down a shade too soon on Grosjean. No, no fault. I'm not placing fault. I'm just saying it was just racing. And sometimes that hair of a judgment will mm -hmm. make a little bit of a difference. And he did hit him because we saw a couple of replays. He did hit him a little bit, not yeah. intentionally, not because he was being reckless, but because they were racing. Yeah. And it just got him just enough, you know, squirrely, mm -hmm. took him up the track and that was it. Um, I don't see it as bad luck. I see it as aggressive driving. I think you're, you're holding on a little too long in that corner to stay side by side or as close as you were. So, yeah. Um, do you have the new IndyCar app? Uh, I, it, it might have updated. I don't know if it's we're not, new. We're not getting paid for this. It's awesome. It's awesome? You, yeah, you can pick the driver and get the in-car camera for the drivers on the app. Oh, just have to check it out. All the race. It, it's, that's, that's, that's a pretty seriously... Uh, that's an upgrade. Ass, I guess, yeah. Um, piece to that. That's so you can watch cool. any in-car camera that you mm -hmm. want as long as I have one? And I think you everybody's your got service one. provider, right? Obviously, right? No, you're just, it's in the app. You go in there and you, <laughs> you pull it up. It's all in the all app. All right. I got to check it out. Yeah. So, um, and finally, I am pleased to see that somebody at, or the leadership team at Andretti Autosport is listening to this very podcast. And I say that because I've been saying for a bit of time that separating the Hurtas would be a good move, Brian. And his dear son, Colton, mm -hmm. I'm referring to. And guess what? It happened. It did. Though a little more mysterious <laughs> in that it had a very generic response when asked about it. Um, and some quotes uh, attributed to Colton over the weekend makes everybody kind of scratch their head a little bit. Also, the fact that they did it in the second race of the season makes it a little bit yeah. unusual as well. Tim, I have my thoughts, but I want to get yours first. Well, I thought it was interesting that Colton said, well, it wasn't my decision. They yeah. just told me what was happening. And he's yeah. like, okay, that's. And if, right. And he said something to the effect of, if you would have asked me, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have made that change. So it wasn't yeah. something he was looking for. And it certainly wasn't something he expected. Mm -mm. 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. I yeah. I, I I don't like the father son on the on the car in the stand. I just think it causes too much too many issues. But mm -hmm. I think the Hurtis, at least the younger Hurtis, still wanted his dad on the pit box, and he got moved. So I I don't know if I have a reason of why they separated them, but they certainly separated them. Yeah. So I, I'll give you my thought on this thing, and my thoughts are this: I think that. Andretti knows and needs a quality season by Cal Kirkwood, right? Yeah. And Herta is very likely the best option for that to help nurture this season with Kirkwood. Hmm. They probably need it from a sponsor perspective and from a long-term planning perspective because we know that he came in. He's one of the most successful junior series drivers there are had a miserable season at, at, at Foyt racing. There was some, there were some times there, Tim, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm going to get a lot of mail on this thing. I'm sure. I felt like he gave up in some of those races where mm -hmm. it just didn't make any sense to me. Why that, that car's not damaged dude. just sit there and get a toe back. What are you doing? Right. Yeah. And I felt like he gave up there. So to me, I look at it that it's an investment in Kirkwood because Colton Hurt is not going anywhere. If he goes anywhere, it's to Formula One with Andretti. Yeah. Right? Colton has a home at Andretti All Sport, I think, for as long as he wants to be there. And he's got a long contract, mm -hmm. allegedly. Right? Yeah. But that's, that's how I see that. I see that as, look, Colton's in a good place. Doesn't really matter who's on the stand. He's going he's gonna to perform. I don't buy that either. But I think that's part of the, part of the thought process. But I think they have to inject a little bit of a more of a white glove treatment with um with Kirkwood you, you think they're trying to right or wrong in what way in what oh way? by Is sending him by not signing him by not signing him originally and then sending him off to Foyt and then bringing him back maybe and going all right we've got to work yeah. we've got some yeah. work to do now and we've got to help him sort of succeed and mm -hmm. be who we always knew known he can be and so therefore, to your thoughts, put Herta on the box because Herta is that person that can make that happen. Yeah. In the past, more recent past, that could have been Brian Barnhart. Yeah, but he went yeah. with uh, Rossi. He so. went with Rossi to Andre or to Aero McLaren. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's he was the best option for that if that's what they're looking at. And that's that's pure speculation on my part. We're fans, not insiders. So that's, that's my two cents on that. I like the move, moving father and son away, but I, I think bigger picture, I think that that could be what's, what's playing into this is they need, they need a quality season out of Kirkwood. He's already had, he had a, a bad wreck in St. Pete. I don't know what the headspace was going into Texas and what some of the inside, you know, observations were mm -hmm. going into Texas that prompted them to make this change. Yeah. Well, it's, we'll see what it, it didn't transpire in the race um, yeah. this past weekend, but we'll see what happens. Uh, no, going no, I mean, just a bonehead move with him and Rossi. Yep. You know, so that's all I got on Texas. Yeah. Texas. Um, it was great. I just, I can't wait. Yeah, for it was year. good. I just, you, you were in, fairly okay with the crowd. Do you think mm -hmm. the race is sustainable? You think there's yeah. going to happen year after year and they're going to yeah, continue this Texas race? Super important market. They can't allow it to, to fail. Yeah. Hispanic market, um, big, you know, big corporation market. Um, mm -hmm. there's no other presence for them in the Southwest. Yeah. Well, and no possible presence for them in the Southwest. Where would they go? Yeah. yeah I, I'll, I'll right? say it's, Good racing on track, so just yeah. got to get people there. It is now. Yeah, it is now. Mm -hmm. You got a few minutes you want to talk to F1? I do. Maybe. Yeah, let's do it. And you saw the race. I I, I appreciate it. I, I'm glad I, that you did. I know yeah, you're know, coming off vacation and, and things, but I want to ask your, your opinion. Do you think that this Australian Grand Prix was better, worse, or the same as the first two races of the season? Um, I'm going, my initial thought is it's the same. I, mm -hmm. I don't think that was a whole lot of, 
uh, drama going on in the race. I think it was, you knew how it was going to unfold. I did enjoy the the start and the two positions uh, lost by Verstappen just to yeah, see nice. what would happen. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, overall, once you got the lead, you kind of knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was only a matter of time, right? Like he lost those spots. The, the so thing that's Mercedes cars. Yeah. I was surprised at the pace of the Mercedes, not just in qualifying. And at the start, right? Better, they had better traction. And the start, yeah. Better grip on the, on the clutch and everything. But uh, man, once he got around, he was eight seconds ahead. And he was just staying at eight seconds. That's all. Yeah, Yeah. there was nothing. You're, You're not pushing at that point. You're just maintaining the gap. It was interesting to watch the fastest lap leader. If somebody got it mm. a couple of laps later, Verstappen took it back. Yeah. If someone else got it, then they took it back again. So it was just yeah. a cat and mouse game of I'm going to stay right here and I'm going to stay in front and, you know, we're just going to sort of ride it out. Yeah. Um, I I liked some of that, that sort of that racing with, uh, you know, Mercedes in the beginning with George Russell in the beginning and then, you know, Alonzo, you know, looking like he was going to be able to chase down Hamilton, which, not, you know, didn't ultimately Never happen. Materialized, but, yeah. Um, I thought those were some highlights, but it was, you know, a few highlights amongst the another yeah. Red Bull domination. Yeah. You know, there was a few, they showed a lot of uh, McLaren in the field trying to pass each other and do different things and pass the Haas and whatnot. And, I'm like, all right, we're watching a battle for 10th place, whatever it is, yeah. and nothing's going on up front. And I think you saw Verstappen maybe 5% of the time as they yeah. put a camera on him just because he was out there just running alone doing his thing. It's kind of reminding everybody that he was he was out there. <laughs> right. What did you yeah, make I of all I, these red flags? Oh, that's terrible. I don't know what they're... I, I cannot... I, I was telling, you know, my bride who sits and tolerates me during these things. <laughs> I cannot understand why these red flag rules in, in Formula One have to be like, well, I got to get out of the car and I've got to fool around with my hat and I've got to change <laughs> and I've got to, you know, we've got to plug the car into every, you know, all of the fans and all of this. And then, you know, we're going to announce over the speakers that the race will resume at, you know, 1358, which is like, <laughs> what's 20 minutes from now? Right. I got time yeah. to run through the drive through and, and get a, yeah. you know, McMuffin and a coffee and come back yeah. before this thing resumes. And it's like, why do, do you have that? time to finish your tea? And yeah, I guess. Tea and then you're going to come back. <laughs> yeah. But it's the like countdowns I, on the screen, which yeah. helped us. It really helped my family watch it because we just fast forward until the countdown was done. So maybe it was for us who weren't watching well, it live. I, I watched I it on delay too because it was on at 12 54 a.m. But <laughs> You know, it's still frustrating because it's like, it's like, we don't, I, I don't understand why you need that level of red flag like that, right? Like that length of it and you're allowing them out and you're doing all that. Just, hey, sit there. We're going to, we're going to plug the fans in, but sit here, I'll, right? You would probably take 10 minutes off of all those red flags. Yeah. But I don't know how you take that long to clean a track either. Like, come on now. That first yeah. one was unreal, right? It was, yeah, you had to clean that gravel, but it's like, did you have to red flag that for that? Yeah. Just terrible. Yeah, just not not a good. No, you didn't. Yeah, and, and they did it anyways. So yeah, I'm not a not a fan. Yeah. Anything else finish... notable in that F1 race? Well, the last We're restart, long. which wasn't a restart. Like, what are you doing? It was a parade <laughs> lap, right? It was. Well, we got to get 58 in. <laughs> Why do you bring that safety car in to race to the checkered flag and you can't pass any? It's just bizarre. Huh? Yeah, just call it. I agree. Right? Just, just call, call it. it. Move on. IndyCar or Formula One is about anything but the racing. Yeah. Chip Ganassi, right? So that <laughs> yeah, that's his quote. Formula One. I, it was interesting anything, to see that but. Mercedes was a little bit better than they have been, and we'll see what that transpires. Ferrari's still Ferrari. You know, you got Leclerc going out uh, mess, early. Yeah. Just a, a mess there. I yeah. I don't Carlos Sainz getting that penalty at the end there. Um, you know, losing a top five finish. Yeah. Five second penalty or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just yeah, Checo that I thought would yeah. drive through the field better and didn't drive through the field as well as I thought. He, he struggled, would. man. He just wanted to get out of, yeah. you know, Melbourne. 
Yeah. He's struggling. Uh, yeah. What I understand, he he struggles there. Oh, that's one of his yeah. no good tracks. Okay. Yep. No so, good. Yeah. Something was definitely up though with that car because it even Max had trouble with the you know, locking the right front. He did. He went off yeah. in the, the grass. Uh, on the one, and there was on the not one. under pressure or anything. So it's like. No, he lost four seconds, got it yeah. back on track. And yeah. Took yeah, off. yeah. Yeah, got his four <laughs> seconds back. It was no big deal. Yeah, um, he, he went back out to eight seconds and then just mm-hmm. held it again. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> Next F1 race is April 28th in Azerbaijan. I just like saying that. So that's several weeks for Ferrari to get their act together, for Mercedes to introduce it whatever is. it is that they're going to introduce. And maybe we'll get some updates from the McLaren team. You know, for and then it, they changed the format of that race. They did? Yeah, there's a practice and then there's a Grand Prix qualifying. And then this is on Friday. And then on Saturday, there's a sprint qualifying oh, and a sprint, sprint race. race. Yeah. yeah. And then on Sunday is the Grand Prix race. But I think your starting spot was from your qualifying that happened on Friday. It's like not in the sprint. No. Weird. Very weird. Weird. The next IndyCar race, however, is in two weeks. Oh, April 16th in Long Beach. Nice. Always a fan favorite. And guess what? What Dan? Captain America and Hinch will be inducted into the uh, Long Beach hall of fame. I didn't know they had one. I did. Yeah. I got a show. I got a podcast. I do IndyCar. I'll send you the link. Does every track have a Hall of Fame? Like... <laughs> I don't know. Well, don't we know, know Daytona does, right? We walked right by it like a thousand times. We were there. Yeah, we know that one does. But does yeah, for the Detroit, did Detroit have a Hall of Fame? I don't know. I don't think so. No. Why do they have a Hall of Fame? It makes no sense to me, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aggravated by the Hall of Fame. There's a tweet yeah. for you. Um, that's all I got. That's all I got too, Dan. It's good to see you, buddy. It's good to see you. Welcome home. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're in our gear. I'm dressed up because I was doing interviews today. So I I put our gear on after I was done uh, doing my normal dance every weekday. So yeah, yeah, I was chilly. It was cold. You know, I've been in the sun and 75 degrees. So come back here. Not a hugger. Oh, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, no, I'm not a hugger either. I am cold (laughs) all the way around. Uh, so yeah, I put on our gear showing off today. Looks good. Appreciate that. Thank you. Good try. Um, we'll catch up again for our long beach preview and, um, yeah, let's do it. Keep making sure that you, uh, keep making sure that's terrific English there, Daniel, uh, keep watching our social media channels as well as our YouTube channel and, uh, engage with us. We love those engagements. We do appreciate all the messages that we got or that Mm -hmm. we get. And um, we'll catch you next time. Thanks, everybody. Take care.